If you've been following this channel for a while, you probably remember this video right here. And when you watch this one, you're gonna think, wait a minute, this totally contradicts that video. I'm confused. Here's the thing, the whole point of that video was highlighting the fact that so many people keep those fish and they're unfortunately not doing the right thing by them. We were saying we'd rather see those fish completely out of the hobby than to see them continue to be abused. And it's the third most watched video on our channel, so there's that. In today's video, we're gonna see a few fish that were on that list, and I wanna be very clear. If you're gonna keep any of the fish on this list, be sure to educate yourself as much as possible as to what these fish require as far as tank size, water parameters, and tank mates. With that said, here is our list of the top 10 titans in freshwater aquariums. Wait a minute, what's a titan in a freshwater aquarium, you ask? Well, that is a fish that's gonna get absolutely massive, and in some cases, they'll even get larger than human beings. So, this should be fun. If you like this kind of content, you should definitely subscribe, and if you don't see your favorite aquarium titan on the list, put it in the comment section down below. If we get enough suggestions, we might even make a whole other video about it. Hi, my name is John, and I love arowanas. All right, be honest, did you really think I wasn't gonna have arowanas on this list? There's a few different types of arowanas, like the silvers, which are from the Amazon, jardinis, which originate from Australia, and the crown jewel of the aquarium hobby, the Asian arowana. The three different types of arowanas are very, very different, yet similar at the same time. But for the purposes of this video, we're talking about aquarium titans, and the one that gets the biggest is the silver. Silver arowanas are an unbelievably graceful fish. They'll stay mainly on the top of the tank, basically skimming the surface, looking for something out of the water to eat. Yes, it's true, these fish will literally jump out of the water to grab bugs or even small birds off of branches. There's plenty of footage out there on YouTube of this, so go check it out. It's not birds though, just like spiders and nasty stuff. With that in mind, there is something about arowanas that makes them particularly hard to keep, and that's keeping them in the tank. When they instinctually want to jump out of the tank to find food, that can be difficult to keep them in your aquarium. And add to that the fact that these fish in the wild can get over three feet long if they decide they want to jump out of your aquarium in your house Good luck trying to stop them. Trust me, I know this from experience. But now that I've scared the crap out of you, I gotta tell you that this has always been my favorite fish to keep. They get big, they're mesmerizing to watch, and they are the fish that got me interested in fish keeping to begin with. So yeah, I'm a little biased, and of course, that was gonna be the first fish on this list. Okay, it's time to make people a little bit upset, but I just gotta be honest with you. I'm not the biggest fan of some of your massive catfish. It's not that I think they're ugly or uncool, it's just that so many of them that I've seen have just been kind of boring and lazy. And I mean, I'm sorry, do, do you want me to lie to you? You wouldn't want that, would you? So if I'm not the biggest fan of these fish, why would I put them on the list of the best fish tank titans? Well, it's because I realize I'm not the only fish keeper in the world, and whether I'm the biggest fan or not, these are some super popular fish. Tiger shovel nose catfish are definitely neat looking. I mean, they get over three feet long. They have those awesome tiger stripes on their bodies. They're, they're really cool. It's just that I've never seen one that's too active. They just kind of sit around and look cool. But to you, a lazy fish might be really cool. I just like a little bit more activity. Like all the fish on this list, just be prepared for this fish to get really big, really fast, and then just sit there and do nothing. There's two fish on this list that definitely look like they are an alien from another planet, and the giant gourami is one of them. This is a fish that starts off looking cute, just like any other gourami, but when it gets big, that's when the magic happens. Giant gouramis got their name for a reason. They're not the biggest fish on this list, but they can get well over two feet in length. And they're not a long and skinny fish like an arowana or a tiger shovel nose. They get big all the way around, which makes them look even bigger than they are. 
This fish is one I would categorize as a water dog, meaning it gets so big and can live up to 10 years, so they can easily become like a member of the family like a dog or a cat would. I'm not gonna give you any tank sizes for any of the fish on this list because I figure if you're looking into monster fish, you already know they need to go in a giant tank. Some of the fish on this list don't need as big a tank as others, but the giant gourami definitely does. I would advise you not to even think about getting one of these unless you have a minimum of 300 gallons. And if you consider how big they get, it could be argued that even that's not big enough. The clown knife is a fish that I've described in many videos as being one of the most unique fish in this hobby. And I genuinely believe that. Yeah, I know there's some more like the black ghost knife and some plecos that look like something out of a science fiction novel, but to me, the clown knife just stands out. This is getting repetitive at this point, but this is a fish that gets really big, which definitely makes them stand out even more. This is not a very active fish, but as cool as they look, they'll make a great focal point and definitely a conversation starter. One of the things that blew me away when I kept a clown knife is their mouth is deceptively big. It doesn't really look like it would be, but they can open it really wide and it's got an interesting scoop shape to it. I don't know, I just wanted to say something different about the clown knives rather than saying the same thing I've been saying over and over and over and over again. They're just really cool fish. When the iridescent shark was discovered and whoever it was that found it decided to name it shark, I have no idea what they were thinking. I mean, this is a catfish. The problem is when you put the name shark on it, it's gonna attract certain people that have absolutely no idea what they're getting into. Think about it. Oh honey, you did so good on your report card, I'm gonna get you a 10 gallon aquarium to put in your bedroom as a reward. Oh, look, you can get a shark. I've been in big box stores and I've watched that happen. It's this kind of simple mistake that leads to some of the biggest, no pun intended, problems in the hobby. People getting fish that they know nothing about simply because it's cute or has a cool name like shark or devil or clown. They blindly buy the fish and they put them in a small tank and when it blows up, they have no idea what to do. The iridescent shark is a really cool fish that's easy to keep, looks nothing like a shark and will be at its best when it's in groups of four or five. Someone's rewarding their child for a good report card and they put four or five fish that can get up to four feet long in a 55 gallon aquarium, or even worse, a 10 or a 20 gallon aquarium. It happens every day. Just don't be that person. So somebody discovers a big silver catfish with stripes on it and says, I got an idea. We'll name that fish Iridescent Shark. We'll sell tons of them. And then someone else comes along and finds a big fat black catfish with a red tail and says, that looks like a red tailed catfish. Why is one a catfish and the other is a shark? I don't know. All right, enough preaching. The red tailed catfish is an unbelievable fish that gets beyond huge. I've read in articles that they can get up to 350 pounds in the wild and people gave me all kinds of crap for it. So I'm not gonna say that again, but let's just say for the sake of argument, they can get up to 100 pounds. Isn't that just as dramatic when we're talking about a fish in a glass box? One of the things about catfish and specifically the red tail catfish that's so much fun is they will literally eat anything. They don't even care how big it is. They will just gorge themselves. Funny story, I had a red tail catfish in a tank with an arowana and some other fish. I bought a box of earthworms from a bait shop and thought it would be fun to feed them to my fish. I dropped like six or seven of them and they were long in the tank because I had some pretty big fish in there. And I'm telling you, I'm not making this up. The only fish in that tank that ate even a little bit of those earthworms was that red tail catfish. He ate every single one of them. And the fish was only like five inches long. The fish looked like it literally swallowed a golf ball. It was huge and it was so fat that it couldn't even swim. It was just sitting down on the bottom, laying on its belly on the substrate, just kind of teetering back and forth on that golf ball belly of his. It was actually kind of hilarious. Unfortunately, this was way before YouTube. Otherwise, I would have definitely grabbed my camera. 
I don't think I even had a cell phone then. When you see people that keep large cichlids on YouTube, a lot of times what you're gonna see is people with big tanks that only have one or two fish in them. Some of you might think that's kind of boring while others will look at that and go, yes. Well, if I've got to pick a monster cichlid to put on the list of aquarium titans, it has to be the dovi. The dovi or wolf cichlid is a true goliath of the cichlid world. This fish can get up to three feet in length and is as powerful as any fish you'll find in the hobby. This would definitely explain why you'll so often see them alone in a tank or maybe with a mating partner. And if there's a male and a female in the tank, look out. If they decide they want to breed, you'll have two big problems on your hand. One is they will pretty much kill anything they have in the tank with them. And two is they have huge spawns. I mean, before you know it, you'll have like 300 baby dovis swimming around. What in the world are you going to do with all those fish? The dovi is an absolutely striking fish that you'll have no problem keeping in a tank alone because every time you see it, your jaw will drop. Plus, they're really active and fun to watch. If you've watched any live streams from King and Queen Cichlids, you'll see their dovi in the background, just going back and forth all over the place, sometimes even banging on the lids to say, hey, pay attention to me. It's pretty daggone entertaining. And I also want to thank them for the footage that I used here for the dovi, because I don't have one. So I figured I'll go to the cichlid guy to get the footage. So thank you, Scott. The Paku is another fish that has some pretty unique things about them. And yes, they get huge and they get huge fast. But one of the weirdest things about them is their teeth. Yes, I said their teeth, and it's not because they're like huge fangs or look like saw blades like piranhas. No, it's because they look like human teeth. It's kind of jolting when you see it at first because it's like the fish has a perfect set of dentures made just for them. Kind of jealous. But it's not just their teeth that makes them stand out. As I said, Pakus get really big and they love being in groups. So having several of them and watching them go back and forth is absolutely mesmerizing. They're also related to piranhas and they look identical to them, except for their teeth, I guess. But I'm gonna be honest with you, some of the footage that I've shown here of Pakus might actually be piranhas. There's just no way to tell. But just like the iridescent shark, this is a selling point for a lot of people because piranhas are illegal in a lot of states, including mine here in Virginia. You can get a fish that looks almost identical to a piranha and it's completely legal. And the fish is gonna swim around like it has a smile on its face all the time with perfect human teeth. All right, be honest. You knew I was gonna put Oscars on this list, right? I mean, it had to happen. Even though they're not really a, an aquarium titan, it, I was still gonna put them on this list. It's not too often where you'll see a list where Oscars are the smallest fish, but in this list, that would be true. Yes, Oscars get big, but not stupid big like all the other fish on this list. If you look at this list, you'll see that pretty much all the fish listed can't really be kept in your standard home aquariums. I mean, how many people have an eight foot aquarium for arowanas or a 2000 gallon tank with big old catfish in it? It's just not realistic. So I included Oscars cause well, they're one of my all time favorite fish and the tank size required for them isn't out of reach for most people. I've been keeping fish for over 25 years and I've never found a fish that feels more like a pet than Oscars. They have more personality than any other fish I've ever found, and you're not gonna find a fish that's easier to keep. Plus, Oscars are literally moody, which is just so cute. If they're excited, you'll know it. If they're sad, you'll definitely know it. In my list for the top 10 tank mates for arowanas, I included Oscars on that list, and I ended the segment by saying, if you don't like Oscars, you can go f yourself. And I realized that was a little harsh. So in this one, I'm gonna to try to control myself by saying, if you don't like Oscars, you're a low life piece of shit, scumbag asshole that doesn't know shit about fish keeping and you should just quit because you're a shit stained motherfucker. <laughs> okay, this is the one. 
This is the fish that I've said many times and will continue to say should not be kept in home aquariums. And the reason why should be obvious. But this is a list of aquarium titans and the titan of all titans in the freshwater fish keeping hobby is the arapaima. In that video that I've mentioned a couple times that I did a while back, I also talked about the fact that arapaimas were featured in an episode of River Monsters with Zeb Hogan. And I got a lot of crap for that. And well, I should have. Cause River Monsters was hosted by Jeremy Wade. Idiot. I mean, cut me some slack though. Jeremy Wade hosts River Monsters and Zeb Hogan hosts Monster Fish. I mean, it's an easy mistake to make. We all have brain farts from time to time. Anyway, I would love nothing more than to someday be able to keep an arapaima. I mean, they are the definition of monster fish, but to be honest, I don't know that I'd ever have anything large enough to keep a fish that can get up to 12 feet long. I mean, seriously, if your name isn't Big Rich from the Ohio Fish Rescue, you probably won't either. The first time I saw arapaima in a fish store, I was like, wait, what? There's two of them for $800 a piece. I went into the store a few weeks later and they were gone. And I asked the guy working at the store about them and he said one guy bought both of them. I said, wow, he must have a huge tank. He said, nope, he's got 150 gallon. One guy spent $1,600 on two fish that are literally gonna get twice as long as the tank that he put them in. Anyway, unless you've converted your swimming pool into an aquarium or you work for a public aquarium or something, don't even consider buying these fish. But I gotta admit, they're pretty damn cool.